Well, hello, boys and girls. Here we are at when we feel like at o'clock, and we're watching. I'm watching the Arizona Nashville game right now. Not too impressed. Did like the Islanders one. That was good. Islanders win gives me a little bit of scratch in my clients' pockets and all that. We are here with some of the finest in the land. Uh, we have Steel Flyers and we have Joe Borek. Uh, just great hockey minds. We do this. We like doing this together all the time. So we decided to record it too. And that's pretty much what this is all about. We're going to be talking about playoff hockey. We're going to be talking about the Rangers and uh, Carolina series and the surprise that happened there. And a whole lot of other frolic, I'm sure. Um, I'd like to get into some Toronto Columbus stuff, mostly because I get to brag a little bit for a short time anyways. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Steel Flyers, <laughs> Steel, you got a How you doing, coming out, bud. Already. Yeah. What yeah, it that? came out that is last night. Stuff, my friend. Tell me all yeah. about it. Thanks, man. Um, like I said, it's an honor and a privilege to even be here with the pros. Uh, if you guys need to know what's going on, these are the guys you need to follow right here. Uh, the meteors of knowledge and the pearls of wisdom. What an honor and a blessing to be here with both of you guys. The website came out yesterday. So, yep, www.steelflyers.com. You can go out there and it's a one-stop shop. You can get the videos. You can get the podcast. Everything you need right there is right there for you. Easy little spot for all your Steel Flyers needs. And the best part is um, you guys are all connected to that too. So you can check out all of the Perlos. You can check out all of the uh, Joes and the True Philadelphia stuff. Uh, so that's all connected to the website. You can check that out. They're all linked to that. So great little stop, one-stop shop for everything you need right there, man. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, buddy. And Joseph Boric, as you mentioned already, and you mentioned uh, his uh, podcast stuff and his writings and everything, it is uh, amazing stuff. Uh, I got, when uh, the great Jamie Baskell introduced me to Joe and I got to talk to him, first of all, I just found out he's a little younger than I ever expected. Man, the hockey knowledge on this guy is incredible, dude. Joe, what are you doing right now? Uh, well, I have the same thing as you, Grant. It's on a bit of a delay, like I said, with the NBC Sports app. But um, I have the game on in the background. That Johansson goal was not too nice. It was kind of – it was a good play by Ryan Johansson to pounce on the puck, but it wasn't a yeah. good goal for, for uh, Kemper. But uh, Nick, Nick Bonino, if anybody hasn't saw that highlight yet, go look at that because that's another guy you don't expect to bury one top shelf. And no. He buried one top oh. shelf. So. Yeah. Um, okay, so but, now, like, you guys are watching it on a stream, right? And and Joe, you're watching it on the app, right? So I'm watching it live. Uh huh. Okay, so you guys. Live. Oh, you. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So you got to see the little scrap there with Elias, with Elias or whatever in Hall. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I just. Yeah. I just All right, right. Okay, okay. But no, I was just saying, oh, like, yeah, Steel that's a good said, hit. Uh, like Steele said, uh, we're all linked on his site. And I know uh, I gave you the true Philadelphian stuff to uh, get up um, when uh, you you get that up. And I gave you all my all the stuff for Andrew. So he'll be linked as well because Andrew does a lot of good stuff for us. Uh, yeah, man. Pub you got to follow those guys. And, yeah, all that other stuff. And he's uh, AJ underscore Santangelo on Twitter for people that don't know. So, yep. he's great too did some yeah. work with him he's fantastic yeah he's he's a good one too um you can follow me on twitter steel flyers uh 52 mind okay. jj borick 26 right. there you go so, let's get into so what do you guys Winter think Carolina. man let's get what do you guys think Winter carolina series now uh this has been fun um before the series started um we all had the rangers i believe but I don't know not you guys. Not, not initially. No, that's right. Yeah, yeah. not initially. Yeah, yeah. Bork had, you had Carolina, but you swayed when Hamilton was out. And yeah, I, also I had the Rangers, guys, but right. only if Shesterkin was in. So why is what's going on with the, what's going on? Carolina looks good. I'm gonna start with uh I'm gonna start with Steel here. What do you think? What are you seeing with Carolina that you like there, Steel? I'll tell you what. Um I'm going to bring up a point that we talked about earlier. I think Morozik is looking really good. Um, I've been very impressed. He, We brought him into Philadelphia for a reason because I think he's a, he's a good young goalie. Okay, And if you give him the minutes and you give him the games, 
he has proven that he is a winning goalie. And he has been for the last couple of years. And, and it showed because Carolina gave him an extension when they brought him in and everything like that. So I think he's played up to his contract. And even though the fact that Dougie Hamilton hasn't played, I think Carolina, with their coaching, with Brenda Moore, they have stepped up. And it doesn't really matter what New York is throwing at them. It just seems like Carolina has been able to be that. Their defense has been able to bend but not break. They've been able to stag back a little bit and take the onslaught, you know, uh, of the Rangers, uh, which there has been s- some. Um, but they've been able to sag and not break. And, and I think that their goalie has been playing very well. So I think that's what's been the key factor is that they've been able to maintain. They've been able to get the jump. They've had that step a, a little bit step ahead they've gotten uh, have they've scored the first goal in each of the first two games right so and they've just built on that so that's what i think is going on and even though i think new york i think lundquist has played really well i think he's looked really well um surprisingly because you said it before perlo that if if zersterkin was in you thought that the rangers would have a much better chance but yeah but but even still I think Lundquist has done very, very well. I think he's looked like the Lundquist that we're used to seeing. You know, I just don't think the team's playing in front of him. That's what I that's what I think is going on with Carolina and 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 New York. Yeah, well the problem is Hank can if you go back three to five years ago, that flutter shot, he had the reactions that were unexplainable. He doesn't have that anymore. So he's not gonna save your you know what when you're really <laughs> stinking anymore because he doesn't have those reactions that Shesterkin does have now as a young kid. So that's the difference. But we have to remember with Carolina, they're not just missing Dougie Hamilton. They're missing a guy that has been there for a while that's more of a defensive anchor in Pesce, who when Hamilton got injured, he really stepped up, and that's what helps solidify their defense. He's not in, and they still looked good, and they've had other guys kind of come in and become leaders. Well, obviously, Jacob Slavin is a leader in the defense, but they've had other guys come in and become leaders. Apparently, Brady Shea, because it's a second camp, has been more, like, present. Um, like, not just on the ice, but off the ice. So, like, that that all helps with everything because you're missing two of your most key defensemen other than Jacob Slavin because Dougie Hamilton's your best puck mover quarterback. And then you have Brett Pesce, who other than Jacob Slavin is your best defender. So I got to say, they did something very good at the deadline and they brought in Vatman has been playing Mm -hmm. fantastic. And and so has she, and Shea's been playing a lot better than he did in New York too. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was a huge advantage for them to have those two guys to fill in, which would be like great yeah. to have them on a lot of yeah. lineups. Let them, these are fill-ins, fill-ins. for yeah. the Carolina Hurricane right now for Hamilton and Pesci, which is pretty darn good fill-ins, I would say. Yeah, great point. Great point, Joe, by, by saying that, though, because they're missing more than just Dougie Hamilton. And we all thought at the very beginning that if just if Carol, uh, if the Hurricanes were going to be missing Dougie Hamilton – that we thought that they were not going to have much of a chance, but they have been missing not just him, but the well, other guy too, but Pesce too. And and they have still been able, they've looked good on the power play. They looked good on the, they, they've looked really good. Just what else can you say? They just looked really good. You know, I mean, when you talk, when I said that um, it was more like when I said that Shesterkin, it's more just a fact that Shesterkin is insane. He could play in front of most lineups and win. He's that kind of goaltender. We've mentioned it, and we can talk about it a little bit, too. I feel the same way about Carter Hart. I've felt yeah. that way for a very long time. That's why I have Philadelphia in the East, because to me, Carter Hart is insane. I just I can't say <laughs> enough about it. I, for, going, for the Philadelphia Flyers going that long without a goaltender, there's a they they went completely the other direction and got maybe one of the best goaltenders. But it could be eventually one of the best goaltenders of all time. I think. Yeah, I bet you. I bet you that uh, 
Shesterkin starts the next game for the Rangers in Carolina. I bet you any money. We'll see. Um, I, I'd put aside. I'd put aside bet on that one. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be available. Loose. I don't. He was. It's only reason why he didn't play was because he was supposedly injured or whatever. I don't. Know. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, it wasn't he a wasn't choice. the backup either. Yeah, it wasn't a choice. It was he wasn't the backup either. Uh, Gorgiev was for both. Oh, yeah. So, um, like I said, Lundqvist played as good as Lundqvist can play at this stage of his career. Yeah, but uh, okay, yeah. the caveat is just on start, a yeah. crazy high level. Just start okay. in the stadium watching. So he obviously is not out because of COVID. Because yeah. he was in the rafters watching. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'm with you now. So yeah. uh, he obviously is out because of an injury. So. Okay, okay. All right, well, then that's a huge blow then. That's a huge blow that because huge blow. nobody saw that coming. And yeah. Nope. That's well, we should hear at. about that soon, though, because you figure normally in the afternoon, I can even look it up now, see if it pops on Twitter. Normally yeah. around like three, four, or five hours before the game, you start hearing what goaltenders might – start for uh what team and they've been a little slow on the announcement of of the t- start times too on some of the games haven't they or who's going to be the goaltender no 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 i mean like the nhl has been a little slow on announcing on who's going to be playing at what yeah. times oh. right or no i thought i uh, saw something like that maybe i was mistaken it, it happens a lot <laughs> but looking ahead, it looks like caroline's gonna carolina is gonna win that series and uh, we're all Brindamore fans, so uh, yeah. I was going to say uh, a bunch of people said on Twitter when I did look it up, if Shesterkin can't go, uh, they would rather see uh, Rangers report wrote an article and somebody else wrote something. Gorgiev start in Game Three because they have nothing left to lose and to just change the energy. Why not? Yeah, might at this well point. give the kid a chance for a playoff game. Exactly. At this the point, what, what do you got to lose? You know, and and look, I think we all, I think we were all a little bit shocked that the Rangers didn't play as well, given uh, the the talent they had on their team. But we, once again, we didn't see the uh, Shosturkin not being able to play either. So that was kind of a blow. That was but, a big thing. Yeah. So let's move over here. I wanted to talk another. I wanted to talk about uh, Columbus Blue Jackets and Toronto Maple Leafs a bit. Um, Columbus is ahead. I knew we were going to get to this game. game, (laughs) Just like we said was going to happen. Do you think Toronto can come back still? Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't the. That wasn't. It's not like Columbus dominant. They played well, but. Uh, they lost in some departments of facets of the game, so I would think they could come back to like like Columbus looked bad in the face off dot as one example. Um, they won, but obviously, normally if you're below forty five percent in the face off dot, that doesn't spell great success to winning. Where Columbus w- found a way to win that game, and they were zero for two on the power play. So normally, when your offense is shot is spotty that also doesn't spell success. So they're just a team that always finds ways to win. But if you continue to play like that, eventually Toronto's going to find a way to win because of their skill. You can't keep letting them win almost 58% of the faceoffs. And you're gonna, they're eventually going to get too many chances where your goalie's going to let in a soft goal or something's going to happen somewhere where the momentum shifts if you keep doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So... They need to have a better second game is basically what I'm getting at. Because they won the game, but they had they looked great shots on goals numbers. But that's because that's what Columbus is. Whenever they have the puck, it's get the damn puck on the net. So they're going to usually look good in shots on goals numbers. Because if I cross the blue line and I'm on Columbus, in my mind, I'm going, let me just shoot this. Where on other teams, I'm not going, let me just shoot this. It depends on the team. So yeah. that so some of their shots on goal numbers are also inflated because Columbus guys just fire it away, which is a good thing. But that's why they look solid. But Corpy also looked uh, very good, obviously getting himself the first star. And then Cam Atkinson looked amazing. So uh, he looked solid in the regular season. If that continues, that really helps Columbus. Obviously, Corpy will continue. He was an all-star. But if Cam Atkinson continues 
that that's uh, expected because they have two potential all star caliber goalies since Ms. Lincoln's emerged and then Corby is an all star. He actually made it, so Yeah. Good series. This is when I thought we were this is the one we were all kind of zeroing in on. At least I was. I'm I'm a little surprised that Columbus was able to take that first game because I, I think Toronto's um I think Toronto's gonna be able to put it together and come back and take the next game if they don't. And see, here's the thing. The team that wins the first game usually is like 80% chance to win the series. So, yeah. And that's probably more in a five-game series. Right. Yeah. And so Toronto's got to put it together and get on a run if they're going to take this. If not, then it's going to definitely be Columbus. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I was like, I was very shocked at how Toronto came out and how they played. I mean, I thought the game was it was a a much closer game than I thought it. But look, we you got eighth and ninth seeds going against mm-hmm. each other, so you you're gonna see this is gonna be evenly matched. This is gonna be one of that's why I think this is the one of the premier matchups because they're so evenly matched. You know what I mean? And they. You got Tortorella with the Columbus Blue Jackets, a Barry, uh, 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 an awards, Jack Adams Award finalist. And, and you got a new coach in Toronto who's just had the opportunity now to have a camp and put his system in now to get them playing because they looked a lot different than what they did during the regular season. You have to at least admit that, you know. Um, they were a little bit. They play a little bit more responsible, a little bit better, two hundred foot game. So the, they played. They matched up a little bit better with Columbus, I think, now after the break than they did before the break. Yeah, no, they so, got in more shooting lanes than they did in the regular season too. They had fourteen block shots, while Columbus is normally a pretty good shot blocking team. They only had four more block shots at eighteen. You don't normally see all that from Toronto in the regular. But the problem with them is they didn't sustain their play. They actually outplayed Columbus in the first. First, the shots yeah. were 11 to 8. They played better than Columbus, and then they just didn't play very well the next two <laughs> periods. That, the, that's, the, that's the issue there. They just didn't sustain their play. They came out for one period and then just, like, forgot what they were doing all of a sudden. <laughs> and then just didn't look good for two periods. And then now I have to come back today and go, maybe we shouldn't let our goalie just sit here and be like, mm-hmm. hey, look at that. Here's a guy that can easily score a goal. Maybe like after the first period. Uh, so that's the problem with Toronto because sometimes they get lackadaisical. And you have to make sure you don't get lackadaisical because you didn't score in a good first period. And you go, okay, let's try to tone it back and score. They toned it back all the way back. And then, yeah, a little bit too much, guys. Whoa. <laughs> I. I, I just think the Jacks played the way they normally do. They frustrate yeah. the crap out of you. They play. They they switch the tempo. They do whatever they have to do to change the energy and pace of the game against the way you want to play, especially against a team like Toronto that relies on flow. And how they're going to find flow with Columbus, I'll tell you. If Keith can do it, I'll consider him a genius. Uh no, it's it's a very difficult thing to do against that Columbus Blue Jackets team. They make their goaltenders look good with their positioning. Uh, they know exactly where their goaltenders' weaknesses are and how mm-hmm. to play to their strengths. Mm-hmm. All of those things like that. Barry, Barry Trotz is, uh, does a lot of the same sort of similar things with his system. Um, I just think that Jackets are even at a higher level and they have better uh, better players to shoot, to score with than the Islanders do. Um, so I'm still saying Columbus in that series, which obviously I did before, and I don't really think it's going to change. And I don't, it's, it's difficult to look at the both lineups and go, what's going on with Toronto? But you can say that with Columbus made you say that all year long and they're not going to stop. It's probably going to make you say that over and over again. Uh, yeah, I like, I, 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 uh, I sold them short enough times in the regular season with, for my, my clients to know that they you never can sell them short because they will they are much better than they look on paper by a long shot yeah incredible no that's true i would like to admit though i also said before when i reversed my thing for um the hurricanes i did say you still can never count out rod brindamore though so 
I yeah, kind of threw a protection in there for reverse. To throw, listen, listen to you. Listen to you go. We <laughs> need to highlight that. Actually, that was a really good point, Joe. And yeah. I have to say, uh, I was kind of downplaying Brindy a tad, even though I love him. But I'm not now. That he had that team set ready to go, perfect playing, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, a 20 year old scored a hat trick. He was a star player, but still, normally <laughs> to have him play that confident. They, they won their, uh, they won their, uh, their warm up game too, rather convincingly too, didn't they? Mm-hmm. So yeah, who they, knows where they can go? If Brindy is on that level that we all know that Brindy will be when he gets, at, he gets more experience, if he's on that level now where he, you're looking mm-hmm. like Barry, Barry Trotz, Tortorella type coach, this team can go anywhere. Yeah, that's why you got those kind of coaches. Who knows what they were? That's why I brought up Carolina again because they played in the first two games really, really well. Where Columbus played, how they find ways to win. Where where that's good, but obviously, eventually, you can't play a game where you find ways to win against every opponent. So yeah, you're gonna have to have better face-off numbers eventually. Have better power play minutes and do all that and not come out in the first period and get outplayed and then figure it out. So you're going to have to do all that stuff more evenly. I think they obviously have the coaching for it. It's more in the playoffs will their players hold up to other teams' players as they move deeper, assuming they can beat Toronto. See, and I think that's where – I think it's where – I think that's where the advantage falls to Tortorella because he's able to be that coach to put his players in that position to be successful. However, if Toronto plays a little better because I think they have a little bit more talent and if they can put it together, that's that's all. That's the only thing I'm saying. I'm not trying to take anything away from Columbus. I'm not trying to take anything away from the coach because we all know that that's exactly what the coach is doing. He's he's imparted a system in in there to where he's allowing the others those players to be successful and allowing. That's why they're the shot block leaders because they're standing in the lanes. That's why. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it one begets the other. You know, yeah. so. <laughs> He is that coach, and he is does have that capability. However, if Toronto starts putting it together, I think they have more talent on the team to pretty much outlast anything that Columbus is going to throw at them. But if they keep playing the way Tortorella has got them playing, then, yeah, Columbus can go anywhere. I uh, I just think they're too soft. I think Toronto's too soft. For, for our purposes, I'm actually hoping Toronto wins a series and plays Philadelphia in the first round. Yeah, the Philadelphia, problem is... Skill. Philadelphia would crush yeah. him, I believe. I believe Philadelphia yeah. would crush Toronto. I do think our game style would play well against them. The thing with Toronto, which Steele said, is skill set-wise, which is why, which so far so good, like you said, Pierlo, uh, so far so good for me with the Lightning beating the Capitals in a shootout. Um, so... Uh, their skill kind of took over on Washington, even though they don't have the physicality of Washington. Where Washington still has skill, but even though Tampa's the deepest team in the league, uh, Toronto doesn't have that amount of skill, but they have deeper line share than Columbus by four. So if they could all of a sudden get their heads out of their you-know-whats and start playing like they're supposed to, then they could actually advance a little bit further. Like if if their if their third line plays like they did in exhibition, and not like it did in the first game, then yeah. Toronto's actually a team to be reckoned with. If their third line keeps playing like it did in game one, then that's a little bit of a problem. But if they play how well they played uh, in exhibition, Kerfoot looked like a different man, and yeah. that line looked ridiculous. Well, but, the you know, reason the reason why that is though is that on the third the third line there can play against other people's third line in an exhibition because they're playing pond hockey. Toronto's going to beat you at pond hockey every day, all day long. But yeah. as soon as you start playing in the playoffs when you got to grind, they're, they're not naturally grinders. They don't have really yeah. any natural grinders on that team. That's why I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of that team. And Babcock, say whatever you want about the reason why he left or whatever the case may be, for over a year, he was saying that, and he's a smart. He's he's a he's a coach that's won cups with teams that had great skilled players on it. But you gotta have your grit. 
And he was saying, I need some grit in this lineup. And they never got it for him. And he ended up walking out. But you see what I mean there? Yeah. Makes complete sense. I mean, they, it might not be their time this year, but I think Toronto moving forward, I think that they might, you know what I mean? They might have the potential to move forward. But, And, you know, I think this is going to play into the point that you made quite a little while ago, Perlo, too, where if Columbus comes out of this winning and just completely destroying Toronto, you know, complete three to nothing, completely destroying them, they would probably be the one team that I would not want to face if I was Philadelphia. You know what I mean? Because I think they would match up a little better against us and our style than any of the other teams in the East. Why don't we talk real quick now that you brought yeah. that up? Pittsburgh, Montreal. Now Pittsburgh has won what has been, has been played better than Montreal both of those series, both of those games. But honestly, do you think uh, from what you've seen that Pittsburgh would be a problem for Philadelphia? Let me say this. And I'm going to I'm going to go on record again and admit this again on record. I watched a Pittsburgh Penguins game oh, yeah, right. <laughs> from puck drop <laughs> To the final horn for the first time in my life (laughs) on purpose. Watch the Pens game without us playing against the Pens. Okay. And that first game, I'll tell you what, I, I disagree. I think Canadians looked better. I think they played better in the first game. Um, I think they had more want to in the first game. And and I think that Pittsburgh looked a little bit off of their game. They, they, they looked a little lethargic. They came back in the second game and played better. Okay. And I'm going to tell you something. If Canadians come out and win the game tonight, then it's all over for Pittsburgh. Right? Because the series is tied, right? 1-1. Yeah. Yeah. If if Canadians come out and play tonight. Now, let's face it, Crosby played to Crosby's strengths. Crosby was Crosby, came out, scored the first goal. That got everybody off, fired up. Pittsburgh played really well. Okay? I'm still not worried about them at all. If we have to play them, I'm not worried about Pittsburgh at all. Yeah. What the about only... Are you with them on that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, because Pittsburgh hasn't looked like Pittsburgh. They've looked okay in their first two games, but they haven't looked like the team they usually are. So unless if they all of a sudden figure that out, um, <laughs> I don't think they're as dangerous as what I thought they were going to be a little bit once Delhi brought up that point in the most recent podcast. I would be interested to see what he thinks now as the result of two games. Um, yeah. Because I wouldn't have them as a contender in the East anymore after these two games. But um, I would be interested to see what he thinks. But their faceoff numbers were almost even in the first games. How I talked about like that was almost split. Carey Price basically just told the Penguins they weren't winning. Um, and then he almost did that in the second game. Um, but the Pens were just too much. And their defense was just not good for... Montreal in the second game, but Carey Price still almost, if they could have just, it was two to one for a while. They could have got that one more goal. They probably would have went to OT. And then yeah, knowing yeah. the Canadians mentality, they probably would have won an OT, not the Pens, because it would have been, Hey, we got to OT against the Penguins. Now let's go finish this. Like, yeah, right. like it would have been a mentality. What do we have to lose? Let's go all aggressive. Let's throw Brendan Gallagher out there. Let's throw Armia. Let's throw every guy that can beat the crap out of Malkin and Crosby. <laughs> Let's cross the score on the ice to just beat them down in OT. And that's probably yeah. what I think they would have done if it got to OT. So I think Pittsburgh would have lost game two if it got to OT. But they did. They were not able to get it to OT, even even though Pittsburgh played a better game. And they were able to win game two, not because of Carey Price, because the Canadians' defense sucked. Um, so that's uh, why. Well, Pittsburgh- let me say this, okay? The the game, the first game, Pittsburgh had a total of six power plays. Yes. And uh, to one against Montreal. And more than 
half of their power plays came in the third period. And more than half of them came in the last 10 minutes. They had a five on three and couldn't do anything against Price. Okay. They were 0 for 5 in game 2 also. They didn't do anything yes. on the power play in general. They done anything. So. <laughs> if you can't score on the power play and the special teams can't be productive for you, that's going to be tough for you to win playoff hockey games. This has been an ongoing off and on problem with Pittsburgh now for I'd say about almost 2 years. Yeah. P- Since Sullivan's consist- been there. Pittsburgh's consistency has just not been there in the last little while for various reasons. Uh, I think their defense is overrated. Um, goaltending has been a problem as well. Um, but I would be happy to see Philadelphia play Pittsburgh, honestly. Yeah. I would rather them play Pittsburgh than Columbus. Um, so for, I'd, rather see, I'd rather see us play uh, Pittsburgh than Columbus. Uh, anybody else out there in the East? I nobody really scares me all that much. Tampa Bay. I wouldn't like to play Tampa Bay. Would you guys like? We to play won't Tampa match Bay? up well against. Tampa, we won't. Um, compared to the other teams, that's the team that we lost against record wise. That's the only. Yeah, team. but we won't. Yeah, we won't see them unless that's the conference finals. Yeah, well, eventually, I mean, that's the. Yeah, team but that I'm. That's the it, team that. But kind see, of if at we that don't, point, I think we would be good because of our agreed. Team. Oh yeah, that's what I was just gonna have. say play at is more physical than Tampa like you kind of said where when I talked about them contending I didn't mean necessarily all the way to the cup I, like, they, <laughs> fine, but that, then once you get to the conference finals that's when all the bad boys usually come out so yep. unless your tough guys are stepping up for you at that point it might become a little hard for Tampa once they reach there especially against a team like the Flyers or if God forbid Boston makes it um yeah. Or somebody of that nature that plays a more physical game. You know what? That would be a great matchup if it was if it was the Flyers and Tampa Bay for the Eastern Conference Finals. That would be one hell of a series. I would love to see that. I look. The only way I think we're going to see Pittsburgh is if Pittsburgh. I think they would have to win. Obviously, they would have to win that series, but we would have to lose the rest of our games. Right, because um, wouldn't wouldn't Pittsburgh be still be considered the fifth seed, right? Yeah. If it, they win, so there's yeah. no way unless we remain the fourth okay, seed, okay. there's no way we're going to be able to face Pittsburgh in the first round. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the 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 chances of that happening are pretty slim yeah. and zero. So. Uh, I think we're. I think we're more going to be along the lines of somebody like Columbus. Honestly, yeah. if they win, um, if Canadians win, we'll be along in the, in those lines of those guys. I don't, I don't like that matchup. I don't. But like but I'm just telling the Islanders might be the other one that we might I get to. If the you Canadians know. win, I do like that matchup. Though I think we could win. I don't necessarily like it as I think it'll be as easy because Price has been playing well. But imagine Hart going up against oh. Price in a series when that's here's the guy the, that everybody said here's the next myself. here's the next carry. This is the next carry Price. And now he's going up against them in a playoff series. That, that, would, it, would, that it wouldn't even be close. It wouldn't even be close. We would crush. Yeah, them. yeah, I agree. If, I agree. If Montreal won, it would be pure luck because the on paper and on what I've seen, they yeah. wouldn't have a chance against. They Columbus. might get one game from us because Carey Price does have those Maybe. like at against uh, Pittsburgh um, games that he had, especially yeah. to get in history against us. Steel can attest to this. There's been some games against Montreal. There was just no chance the Flyers were winning. No, they, they no, could have no. had 58 shots on goal. They probably could have had 108 shots on goal when they weren't going to win that game. Not with Carey Price and yeah, some of the nights Carey Price was one. I, I there was nights where I did not. If we were if, like, if you look on the schedule and you see, oh, we're playing Montreal. Oh, there's a loss. Because if you, <laughs> well, no, because if you knew that Carey Price was in net, there was like there was no way. Look, previously to AV getting here, 
you could look on there and previously without the last couple of years because Montreal hasn't been the same Montreal team the last couple of years. But for the most part, you could say you'd look down there and say, oh, Carey Price is playing. Okay, that's a loss. That's just Carey Price. And Montreal usually had a pretty decent enough team. That's how it would be. Not this year. Not this year. Philadelphia has owned the Metropolitan. We There's no team in the East that scares me. Not one. Not even Columbus. Not, not even as not even if they come out and beat Toronto and we end up playing them in the first round, I'm not scared of Columbus. Okay. I think we have a better matchup against any of the teams in the East. The only thing that I would think would be a much better matchup for us is going to be a Western team. And I think it's going to be either Colorado or St. Louis or maybe even Edmonton. I don't know. But one of those three teams, I think, coming out of the West is the only team that I would even be remotely worried about for the Flyers. I yeah. would, uh, I would think that if McDavid stays where he is right now. Yeah, the uh, only issue with you guys is I feel like we could push back your defense a little bit. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. like I feel like Koskinen might start slashing his own defenders at a certain point. <laughs> uh, it's like, hey, Adam, play defense. <laughs> Come on, buddy. <laughs> it's not really. It's not really Edmonton's defense's uh, fault so much, I guess, because Tippett has said we're gonna we're gonna go all guns out. That's true. You're, That's, you're yeah. gonna see high scoring games. He said we can outscore anybody, and we're gonna do it. That's what he's doing. So. Nashville well, three to nothing right now. Risky yeah. against. Uh, yeah. So much for my Arizona pick. That's just yeah. Risky against us. Um, Can't win them all. Yeah, because if you uh, play running gun against the Flyers sometimes and they start stopping your gunning, then normally that's when you go down 3 nothing to the Flyers or 2 nothing to the Flyers. <laughs> Fairly. It seemed like that's what... I take, I take Philly, and again, it's all going to be the same. That's the reason why I picked him from the beginning. Carter Hart yeah. is amazing, and he's going to show it this playoffs that he is one yeah. up there with the greatest. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned one with Brodeur. Patrick Law, Dominic Hasek, eventually we'll be saying Carter Hart in the same breath as all of them. I wow. believe he's uh, I mean, I would say, really do believe yeah, Well, my one friend is pissed that he gets compared to Price because Price has never won anything. Uh, even though he's a good goalie, he's never won. Price uh-huh. is still amazing, man. So, therefore... Yeah, but Carter it, Hart's won in the in the juniors. He's won in the Mar- well. Carter Hart couldn't have won anything yet. If he won the Stanley Cup in his first year, that would have been amazing. He, that, yeah. that, his point was... We should compare uh, somebody like if you want to compare him to Jonathan Quick in his heyday, because Quick okay. carried King. I George. suppose, but if Carter, you want to go Hart with Hasek, cup in Montreal yeah. if he was there either. Go with Hasek. No, I don't think so either. But if you want to <laughs> just say, yeah, we'll compare him to the dominator. The problem with comparing someone to the dominator is he was the most unconventional goaltender. Like it's, it's, it's not player. like yeah, it's not like Hasek went. I have a goalie style. I'm going to use it each game. He went, this puck's coming at me, however the hell I can save it. Even if yeah. it's me jumping and doing a somersault. Yeah. I'm probably gonna... yeah, so, like, that's why that's why it's hard to compare anybody to Dominic Hasek, because, except for maybe Brodeur, because Brodeur was going to do anything in his right mind to save the puck, like, fly through the air and lift his skate all the way up to the top of the post. That's the only guy that did some of the ridiculous stuff Hasek did. I See, think I think I, I I think when you look back at those guys, I think more Patrick Waugh did more of those kinds of hashic things than Brodor did, because I think Brodor had more of a hybrid style where he would go down and make the save more so than he would be kicking his legs out like Hashik would. And I just seen a lot of that in I Waugh too. I feel like that too. was later in his career though. Like yeah. I feel like when Marty first started, he was a little bit different. And then when he progressed, he became a hybrid. I feel like yeah, he because... wasn't as hybrid at the start. Patrick yeah. Waugh was probably the best positional goaltender I ever saw. Yeah. Positionally, the guy was never out of position. Yeah. Ever, ever, well, ever. We just ever. insulted. We just talked about how Montreal doesn't win well. He had the best goalie that you kept in for, what was it, seven, eight goals, whatever the hell that one game was. Yeah. Uh, and then right after the game, yeah, this is my final game in Montreal, ladies and gentlemen, deuces. Uh, like, so that's, uh, that goes to show how they run their And then he, he proceeds to go to Colorado and win a cup. How you doing? 
<laughs> yeah, who was not a team of the Elks of Montreal whatsoever. Exactly, so exactly. <laughs> well, my friend, I, I think we could probably, you know, we can go on for hours, my gosh. But I don't, Easily. Think, our, I don't think our fans go on for hours, unfortunately. I wish, I wish they would. One day they will. But yeah. uh, we, we probably should wrap her up right now. I, I love talking to you guys. I, love, I, I look forward to this. Every Ditto. time we get an opportunity. Oh, to so do I. Talk, so do I. Yeah. Incredible. Thank it, you. It's a great for uh, coming here. And again, like usual and steel. I love, thank you. Awesome. You got your website up and everything like that. Um, we better cut her off here now. I hope you've enjoyed this fine programming. These guys have been brilliant. You guys are awesome. Make sure you're hitting the subscribe and the bell and checking out all our stuff that we told you about in the first place. Have a great day. Lots of love to you. Coming to you from some of the finest in the land. Goodbye. Good hockey. <laughs>